We've just finished fossil fuel and oil. So now we're moving on to the periodic table. The periodic table is a group of all of the elements known to us and is arranged from the smallest atom to the largest, starting with hydrogen and going upwards from there. There are eight groups in the periodic table, starting with group one on the far left side going downwards, group two next to it also going downwards, and all the way up to group eight, which is also known as group zero. Group one is known as alkali metals, and group eight or zero are called the noble gases. The periods, which run horizontally across, represent highest unexcited energy level for an electron in that element. The sorting of elements into groups is based on the element's chemical properties. For example, in group one all elements are very similar in their reactions, and the period talks about the highest energy level for an electron for that element in an unexcited state. The transition metals are located between group two and three and form the bulk of the periodic table. They are mostly used to make a wide range of compounds, such as metal alloys, and form coloured compounds as well. The most common alloy is steel, and that's a mixture of carbon, iron and nickel. The noble gases are placed in group 8, or group 0, in the periodic table. We have neon, radon, krypton, xenon and helium. They're the most unreactive of all elements because they have a full outer shell meaning that they have no electrons free to react to other elements and are very stable. They form colourless gases, however their vapours will be coloured. For example, neon is used in signboards because it forms a colourful vapour so you can get bright green or pink, etc. The halogens which make up group 7 are a bit more unstable than the noble gases. They are made up of oxygen, chlorine, fluorine, iodine and bromine. They have synthesized atomic activity, which means they go around in pairs, for example Cl2, Br2. The reason they do this is because they have a free electron, which allows them to covalently bond to themselves. The group 1 elements are known as the alkali metals, because when they react to water, they form an alkali. For example, take potassium. Potassium plus water will give us potassium hydroxide and hydrogen. As you go down the group, the reaction of water gets more and more vigorous. So if you drop a piece of sodium into water, it will slightly dissolve and you may see a spark. If you add a big chunk of sodium into the water, it will colour up into a flame and could blow up the container that it was in. Don't try that at home, by the way. When this element reacts with oxygen, the outer layer will become dull and form oxide. When you react to these metals with water, for example if you take a lump of one of them and cut a slice of it, the surface will at first appear very shiny, as the layer of metal oxide is formed over the top. If you burn these elements, they form specific colours that can be used in fireworks. The colours range from brick red, crimson to blue, depending on which element you burn. Group 2, the alkaline earth metals, are very similar to group 1, alkali. However, they occur more naturally, such as magnesium and calcium. They can also be used in things like fireworks, because when you burn them, they all have specific flame colours. This topic is the periodic table. Make sure you view it again if you missed any parts of it. Now, let's move on to the rocks.